Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Penny Pincher Firearms. This is going to be a real quick one. It's just a range report. Uh, I went to the range today, had a good time. I actually met a really nice family. Some kids were uh, out for one of the, the, they're a family. One of the kids' birthday was happening, so they went shooting too. Uh, so I shared my gun with them. That was pretty cool. You'll notice some of the rounds uh, you'll see on the target look like pretty bad. They're theirs. I'll point them out when we get to it. So this is actually the first time I really did an accuracy check with the walker. Uh, I was shooting 50, between 20 and 50 grains of black MZ out of it to really try and get a feel for the best load. It seems as though it really doesn't care that much um, what powder load is in it. It just always hits the target, same spot, really unusual. Um, so that's this target right here. My range has these two-sided targets. Uh, the bottom was me shooting my K31. So we'll get to the K31 in a bit. Uh, so these are the flyers. There's one, two, three, and four. That was uh, the kid, uh, his brother, and his dad. I let them shoot uh, between them. One, two, three, four, five. Five rounds between all three of them. Uh, the dad shot two. Uh, one of the the older kids shot three or two, and then the younger one shot one. So they they shot a total of five shots. I asked them to aim here, um, and I think maybe another one got maybe in one of these holes, but it's somewhere on there, I'm sure. So that that's them. You can ignore those. So I was shooting the uh, the the walker. I was shooting it at 25 yards, and most of the time when I was aiming on this target, if I aim dead center everything was up here like 12 inches high so i found that if i aimed at the bottom of the target dead center i was getting groups up here so and that was with all different loads so i was trying to figure out and i eventually got it so it would shoot in that area so that was doing a lot better and then i just figured out how to get them here and i got a flyer here and a flyer here and i got another flyer down here these are some uh, rounds I'll talk about in a second. So that that's the walker. Uh, I gotta say, having the opportunity to let the the kids shoot the uh, the walker, uh, both kids and the father, they they shot it. Uh, they shot 50 grain loads, so the typical load for a walker revolver, and they were shooting a nine millimeter. So you know there was a big difference in recoil, sound, smoke, all that stuff, and they all really liked it. Um, the dad said it was way more manly than his 9mm, but I was just like, trust me, this is not nearly as practical as a 9mm. So, it was just cool to be able to share that with them on the kid's birthday. You know, they're having their celebration. You know, let's let's share. I, and I love sharing these kinds of things. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to share with uh, them on their handgun, but they were pretty much done by the time that they, uh, they got to, to me. Uh, the kid, actually, the youngest one who had his birthday that day, or today, um, was saying that it was loud, and I offered to him, like, you want to shoot it? Ask your dad. And, you know, I asked his dad, and they all were like, yeah, let's all try it out. So I showed them how it was loaded and everything, and then proceeded to let them shoot my target. And um, I don't think any of them hit, honestly. Uh, I told them to aim at the bottom of this and see what would happen. Uh, maybe, oh, probably this little nick up here was one of them. It could have been me too when I was aiming in here too. So they, uh, you know, I didn't expect them to shoot well. Uh, from what they were saying, the the father was saying that they weren't terribly experienced in shooting. Uh, in fact, when I let them shoot the K31 later, when they caught up with me at the 50 yard line, uh, one of the the older older kid actually said like that was the biggest gun he had ever shot. So you know, I was I was pretty impressed that you know these kids had. They had never shot anything much bigger than a 22, uh, though they did take a 20 gauge shotgun. It was uh, their father's uh, Christmas gift. So uh, they all got to shoot that, and I think at that point that was the biggest gun they'd all shot. So, you know, that, but it was a cool thing to share. So uh, the next thing I shot at the 50 yard line was the K31. You guys have met this one before. And what I was shooting was PPU 174 grain soft points um these my buddy bought for me in oregon uh when they were uh going on a run up to uh um cabela's which is supposedly the only place you can find ppu so i had him buy me a box of this and 
I wasn't sure how accurate it would be. I've had, I have this old box that I bought in Baton Rouge, but uh, this is a fresh new box. The other ones are kind of dirty because I left them in a box and they, uh, the brass isn't looking great, but they probably shoot just fine. So I wanted to shoot these because I've shot the, uh, the surplus ammunition, which is considered to be match grade. And um, it, it shot as well, I would say, as the, uh, the Swiss made stuff. So uh, let's look at that. So the first five shots I shot today were actually up here. I was aiming at the square. I put the post right at the bottom of the square. Uh, these were my reloads. And I didn't really take a whole lot of time uh, shooting these. So I think part of the reason the group is so wide, it's about an inch wide, is the fact that uh, I wasn't really taking my time shooting this. So later on, I shot another four aiming dead center. That's what I got here. So I discovered though, if I put the uh, front post at the bottom of this, it actually matches this perfectly. So if I make that line, any white disappear just at the bottom of that line, I was able to get everything except for these two flyers in that 10 ring, which is really impressive. Uh, I didn't expect that kind of accuracy out of PPU, but you know, it's, it's really good. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really impressed. So I'm hoping I can uh, dial in the reloads a little bit more and hopefully get some more accuracy out of those. That's actually based on a uh, 3040 Crag load that I have of uh, 21.6 SR4759. Um, so it, I think if I add a little bit more powder, actually, it'll tighten that up, but let's, I'm going to, I'm going to try just doing the same powder load and taking my time next time. But I really just wanted to see how, if, how well they'd shoot. Uh, I'd actually never shot them at, at the range. So I was a little excited and I think I spent maybe 15 seconds or less on each of those shots. Whereas here... And here, especially here, when I noticed how well I was doing, I really, really took my time. I was uh, as much as 30 seconds between shots, just sitting there trying to relax and make sure everything was uh, right where it needed to be. So I I'm quite pleased with my range day. Uh, I think I'm starting to get to the point where I would consider myself uh, married to this rifle. Uh, this K31, if you've watched the video previously, I had it a, a year ago. Uh, you know, I wasn't married to it then. I thought it was cool. Uh, but the the fact that I'm seeing this accuracy come out of it, it with, uh, you know, PPU rounds, which I didn't expect that, that level of accuracy. Um, I, I'm really impressed. And I think I'm going to keep it around. I might make it into... Uh, you know, I, I treat my Mosin Nagant as my hog gun, uh, and this could be a, a secondary. Um, I could probably reach out and touch a little bit easier with this rifle compared to the Nagant, um, despite it having a shorter barrel. I just feel that this would be a way more accurate gun because my Mosin Nagant, it, it shoots reasonably well, but I think I would be getting a much larger group than what I was getting back here. So I, I'm quite pleased with this rifle. I'm not in love yet, but I'm getting there. Uh, I think once I shoot enough rounds through it, I'll really know whether I want to keep it or not. Um, I paid $350 for this one at Gander Mountain uh, about a year and a few months ago. And, you know, it's, it's really brought a lot of pleasure. It's been a really fun rifle to shoot. Um, it's really comfortable despite its weight to carry. Uh, the, the Swiss really designed a good rifle. Um, one of the cool things I'll point out, uh, you know, you know it's a straight pull, but the, the kid had never seen a straight pull before. They were shooting a 22 at the 50 yard line and uh, on top of that shotgun. And the kid, they were shooting a bolt action. And I told him, you know, this is technically a bolt action too. And he was just like, well, how does it work? And I showed him and I was like, straight pull and it just blew his mind and I love that moment I love that moment with adults kids where they see one of these old guns and it does something they never would have thought was possible and you know technology that goes back this technology in a lot of ways goes back to the 1880s so uh, you know it's refinement 
on the K11 and uh, the 1889 uh, Swiss rifle, the Schmidt Rubin. It's a refinement. It's obviously not the same rifle. You can't call this a Schmidt Rubin because this is this is really a different gun. But they refined that straight pull design, and it just blew the kid's mind. And it was such a, a good pleasure to to let him shoot it on his birthday. Uh, to the point that I, I let him keep the brass that he ejected. I was like, you know, that's the round you shot. And up to that point, that was the biggest gun, especially the younger kid, had ever shot. So it it brings me a lot of pleasure, pleasure to, to put a, a smile on a kid's face like that. I, I really enjoy being able to do that. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's one of those things that makes things like this worth it. Not just me getting to shoot it, but me getting to share it because um, that's a big part of why I make these videos is so I can share in the hobby and not brag about the fact that I have these things but to remind people that you can have them too they're not that expensive and you know even when they're cheap they're good so yeah it was a really good range day despite uh, we've had recent rains it was really muddy really humid too. I sweat all over this thing. You'll notice I'm not even wearing my typical jacket because it's humid in the house right now. So yeah, I, I had a great day. I had a really great day. I'm, I'm very happy. So uh, yeah, just remember guys, a good gun doesn't have to cost a pretty penny.